We left this morning Ashafa and we are on the way to Al Medina. And we are going with Fakat, nice guy from Jina, and we go with him 150 kilometers. So we took a road for non Muslims to go around Mecca because uh, there are two ways. One is for Muslims, it's short way, and another one for non Muslims. And Fakat took this way especially for us. So very good, and we have today 550 kilometers to go to Medina. So he has a very nice apartment in a very good location. He has like six rooms at his apartment. <laughs> it's very easy to get lost while walking around this big house. So this is my room. It's one of the uh, living rooms. So in this apartment, Abdul has three living rooms, Najibis. So he has three kids, but they live with his mother, grandmother. This is second Medjibis with violet, co uh, violet colors. And uh, Gala will sleep here. <laughs> luxury, luxury couch surfing <laughs> in Medina. <laughs> we are very lucky to find such a nice host. He can host here at least 100 people. <laughs> And uh, this place is located just two and a half kilometers away from the main mosque, Haram. <laughs> the first place we came to visit in Medina is a Jabal Uhud, means mountain Uhud. The peak is around 1000 meters and we go with our couch surfing host Abdul and his friend Hassan, <laughs> who is the first time in the mountains. <laughs> he never been here, even he is from here. So according to the legend, there are two mountains in Medina, Jabal Uhud means paradise and another mountain means hell. So to get to Jabal Uhud you can go first by car but it has to be jeep, better 4x4 four four, and after you have to walk. Because actually there is no like official trail to the top of this mountain so you just go in the direction of the top and uh, take this hike. But it's not difficult, but it's steep. So if the people are not trained, it can be hard, of course, but for us it's okay. to Jabal Uhud we found these petroglyphs and as Abdul said it says about God yeah. yes 
maybe around 1000 years old or maybe older. This mountain is Jabal Air. It means a spot of hell. There is no official trail there. At least I don't even see obvious way to go up. Maybe if you start like from down there and have to continue, but it doesn't look <laughs> as a popular place to come. So after the sunset and evening prayer, we stopped at this gas station and I see a lot of people which uh, came for Umrah. So we are traveling from Medina, I guess, to Mecca. It's full of people in the evening time. From Medina I came to Jidda and today I came to the district Al Balad. So this is historical town, historical center, and here the old houses, some houses are like 500 years old. And here I can see this pottery inside of the wall. So the weather is not so hot and uh, it's not crowded. After 7 p.m. many people will come to this district. But now it's Ramadan, so not yet. All these buildings were built by Portuguese people. So some of them like 100 years old, some even 500. But mostly now in the process of renovation. It's half past six, just after 20 minutes will be the evening prayer and after people will start to eat breakfast, iftar. So people were already waiting on the street, men sitting and waiting <laughs> to start their breakfast. This is the Mecca's gate. As one local man explained me, it called Mecca Gate because it's located towards the uh, direction of Mecca or something like that. And then, and I can see, seems some uh, homeless people stay under these gates. I see some tent and so on. This is also street of Al Balat district. <laughs> you could you could easily think it's Pakistan or India because it's quite dirty. So now all streets um, getting empty because all people uh, gather at some uh, special spots to start their breakfast.
holidays in Saudi Arabia and I will hitchhike from Jeddah to Riyadh. I started in the afternoon, so now it's almost 1 p.m. But it's okay because it's Friday, in the morning people sleep. So I decided to start after the prayer. I have almost 1,000 kilometers to go to Riyadh. From Jitta first I have to go to Al Jumun. It's like 55 kilometers. And from there I will take a road for non-Muslims to go around Mecca. So now a very nice woman picked me up and she's bringing me to Al Juma. So now because of Friday it's not so much traffic on the roads but it's okay so far. And the weather is not extremely hot today. This man Sally took me to Azaima. From there will be direct road to Riyadh. And now we are passing this beautiful landscape. If I wouldn't know it's Saudi Arabia, I wouldn't think because it looks like volcanic landscape and uh, many trees and just green all around. So this is non-Muslim road around Mecca. From Azaima it will be for me direct road to Riyadh. We started one hour later than me. After sunset, people stop fasting, so everyone starts to eat now. People uh, start on big uh, gas stations <laughs> to take breakfast. But if you are traveling, it's allowed to eat. It's allowed to break fasting if you're traveling for long distances. So many, many, many people from different Arabic countries. In Riyadh, I stayed with Zukdi. I'm his first guest from Couchsurfing, first real guest which he hosted. And uh, I think it's my last Couchsurfing host in Saudi Arabia. Time is <laughs> almost <laughs> Time is going fast. 2 p.m. and I will start my hitchhiking to Abu Dhabi. 900 kilometers. Good luck in your job. Thank you, Absurd thank you. <laughs> it's already like late, but I will see uh, how far I can get today at least. Zuhri drove me outside of Riyadh and left me on the big gas station in the direction of uh, Qatar and Emirates. So here I can find right for far away. So let's see how lucky I will be today. Because in Ramadan time many people travel uh, to Mecca, so many people will return home to Emirates, for example, to Abu, to Abu Dhabi as well. The time is 6 p.m. and uh, I'm like 50 kilometers away from the border with Qatar. It's a town called Salva. And from Riyadh I'm going with Said. He is from Qatar originally. <laughs> So uh, he took me for 450 kilometers and we have a very nice conversation and I remember all these good people from Qatar which I met before in my trip. <laughs> yes, and uh, now it's almost like uh, dark, even it's just uh, 6 p.m. But uh, I believe from Salva it will be also possible to hitchhike to Emirates because it will be just 150 kilometers. 
Rogers. Thank you, Sai. <laughs> By the way, he, he is a talented uh, poet. <laughs> he showed me his uh, 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 programs on TV. I don't know. <laughs> yes, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah, I told you, really. I had a very good experience with people from Qatar. <laughs> so they, we are crossing the desert. So what's the name of this area? This is called uh, Jafur. Uh -huh. And it belongs and, and to your... This is wrong for our family, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's around uh, 700 kilo. Mm -hmm. And your family is yeah, like one? It's all the places here. 150,000 yeah. people. 150,000. Uh -huh. That's a lot. When I was hitchhiking uh, near the town Sanwa, near the border with Qatar, Saudi police helped me to find the right to Emirates. So time is 8 p.m. and they have 100 kilometers to the border with Emirates. I'm going with father and his son. But they go just to the small town Sila, which is 20 kilometers away from the border. So in this time, Saudi police was really helpful. Because I thought maybe they, they will not allow me to hitchhike. But they were smart and they uh, found the right for me. Time is half past one. I started from Riyadh at half past two and it took me just three cars to arrive to Abu Dhabi. So from the border one Emirati guy took me and he dropped me near Abu Dhabi. I have 35 kilometers more to go to my couch surfing place. So I was waiting around uh, 10 minutes and after two Pakistani guys picked me up and they are bringing me to my destination and they are just nice people and uh, uh, kind as well so even it's night time but still the road is busy <laughs> in Abu Dhabi I got a couch surfing host who stayed in a hotel so he already left so this hotel was located near the beach right in the center and I had made myself mattress out of, out of uh, pillows of this sofa, so it was comfortable. So, I will go now to the beach to swim and just visit around the city maybe a little bit. And this night I already will go to the airport. So my trip around Arabic countries will be finished in one day. So this is the view. And the beach is over there, Cornish. My last stop in Emirates and in Abu Dhabi is the beach. I spent here a couple of hours, it's located next to the Cornish, so it's open public beach. After staying in Saudi Arabia, for me now it's so unusual that I can just swim in the bikini. <laughs> it's open. So time is 6 p.m. and I will hitchhike to the airport. And actually I left all my stuff just with these guys which uh, give boats for rent and it, it is safe all my money on all my documents everything and I stayed here a couple of hours I returned everything is there very nice uh, UAE is really a safe country center of Abu Dhabi uh, to the airport. It took me just two cars and uh, one man who picked me up first. He uh, offered me to take a rest for a few hours at his place, but I decided to go directly to the airport. So in the airport of Abu Dhabi there are no comfortable seats, so there is no place to lay down. But I found some spots where I can my yoga mat and uh, have 
rest for a few hours because I still have at least like three, four hours till uh, we'll start check-in. 